What's up, everybody? We're back. This is Jeremiah's second clone. We're going to call him. I don't know. Let's come up with a good name for my second clone. Mm. That was fun. So you're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. I had a, We've been working on a cloning project for me because, you know, I'm a busy guy. Um, that was a first stab. We need to work on, on Sam's facial hair, though. Uh, it's, it's a little underwhelming, um, but, you know, baby steps and as all things in entrepreneurial uh, there endeavors go. There you go. shit gonna happen that uh gets in the way inevitably and, will <laughs> yeah and and what sam had to do essentially i've had to do uh every day this week at a at the restaurant just nobody was around uh, i just had to step in improv and do an improv and and wear a lot of hats that i'm not used to probably something you've it's probably something you are used to as an entrepreneur right yeah yeah i was gonna ask so you probably had to do that when was the last time you uh you you uh did some framework <laughs> well okay well <laughs> that might be something else entirely yeah yeah but uh in fact, you know, I really uh, transcend construction came about not from uh, my hands on right. background. It was more from management and yeah. just uh, my uh, my desire to start something new that involved uh, home. Right. Yeah. Something that was uh, what I always said is urgent and important for uh, my client base. Because mm -hmm. what what is more important than your home and your, your biggest investment and uh that's really where I want to be. There is no place like home yeah. in a traditional yeah. sense. Uh, and I mean it in that positive sense because it could be the other way, sure. depending how you look at it. Sure. Um, and we wanted to uh, be, uh, you know, part of that journey to your home. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, finding your way involved transcend. Yeah. And uh, everything we do oh, really involves the, never, the home, the house, the name, and yeah. uh, we, we focus on the, the home itself. So, the the brownstone the row house uh it's you know we are res residential builders at heart so mm -hmm. we we've really focused our attention in that area so um and and did you get started in winter terrace as far as yeah. kicking your business off i mean you so you grew up in winter terrace grew right? up in winter like, terrace like i said Ave. we were yeah. right we grew up on prospect avenue i've done uh, i've worked every every business in prospect avenue i could right. as a kid um, and then, you know, took a little, uh, detour, went a little corporate for a while, but also, uh, invested in real estate mm -hmm. in Windsor Terrace and in, in Park Slope. It was smart. a good yeah, time, yeah. but I was not a buy and hold uh, person. I was more get in, do some renovations, mm -hmm. be a short-term landlord or homeowner and then move on. Um, and what age were you when you started doing that? I think my first home, my first apartment I purchased in, uh, like 97, 98. So I was in my uh, late twenties, mm -hmm. mid to late twenties, and um, and it never stopped from there. Yeah. Right. And uh, so Brooklyn was on a major upswing, mm -hmm. and so uh, ultimately, you know, I was doing my little uh, side work and working a corporate gig. Both would treat me very well. I had a great experience throughout. But when I wanted to change the way I live, I wanted to spend more time with my family. Mm -hmm. uh, really, quantity. And we also, we always focus on quality time. I wanted to spend quantity time with my family. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be there when they wake up. I wanted to help take them to school. I really wanted to be around them. So you were a young dad. I am a young dad. Yes, no, at the am. time. Yeah, Cause now it's like, I don't want to be around when you wake <laughs> no, up. I, I don't want to be do. there when you I get still okay. do. And I still am. You know, I, 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 really, I really love that aspect. I'm just joking, girl. I know. Really, I'm joking. But uh, no, it was the same for me. Yeah, exactly I know. I see. I see. Yeah. We live, and I still uh, we do live similar lives in yeah. the morning. You know, I see. Yeah. We, we drop kids off at the same school. And that, that was important for me, too. We didn't want to end up in a situation where we were just passing our kids off to, you know, Absolutely. somebody as initially that was a stranger. You maybe get lucky and develop a relationship with them over time. But we wanted to play active parts in their We want certain their lives. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially with our kids. But so when I, when I, uh, when I, when about 2007, I was working still this full time job and I oh, okay. wanted to start my own thing. And, and I did. And I didn't leave the, uh, the full time gig until 08. Mm -hmm. I took my leave of absence, just never came back, you know, work, worked out. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get out. some milk. I'll yeah, be back soon. Worked it out to get yeah. a package in the end because they That's were going to do some layoffs. So it worked out in my favor. Mm -hmm. uh, company went belly up um, after that. So I didn't, in fact, get the package. But uh, nonetheless, yeah. I was already into my own little uh, new world. Like my cab ride today. You never know what's going to happen. There you go. You never know. Yeah. Like a box of chocolate, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 
but yeah, we so we opened up in Windsor Terrace, and, and that was when uh, I started to see the branded trucks yeah, around, yeah, which was great. Two thousand seven, eight, yeah, yeah, a lot of trucks mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of a lot of capital. I saw investment. one this morning. In fact, you saw on one press, this morning. That's a good data. sign. It's yes, great. Yes. That's what I want to hear. And you know, to be honest, we never left Windsor Terrace. So we yeah. started in Windsor Terrace. There was no. A, it's obviously a that huge amount of work, and you had a you had a you actually had a storefront. On, we still on we still have that. space in different yeah. locations, uh, but I did consolidate my home to a home office. Yeah, it was just made That's more smart. sense. I, I know a lot of people that are doing that lately. I think that is the trend, but yeah. we still have mm-hmm. space for equipment and, and, right. and a smaller office. But nonetheless, no, no one really comes to visit us. We we do the visiting. You did have a a bench, yeah, right yeah, in the middle well, office yeah, to I, do I, to work out. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> that was a sign. Okay. And we, and we have another downtown. bench with, with you know, <laughs> just, just having people on the side to protect the uh, the brand and, and our clients if things go wrong. Right. There's always got to be a bench. But <laughs> yeah. And so Brooklyn's been really good to us. Yeah. It's, uh, well, I love talking to you. To I love talking to your dad because he's, he really like tells the stories. He like, he like oversees the neighborhood. He stands out front <laughs> and he just like smokes cigarettes and just watches everybody. He knows every little ripple yeah, in, in yeah. the, in the ground. And well, what's ahead, funny what is if you, if you were to do a Google earth or prospect Avenue, not just once, I think it's like the third time <laughs> he's, he's come up in front of that house. Yeah. So uh, I bet I he's bet. a landmark. Yes, definitely. And he was telling me recently, he was talking about some of those wood frame homes right along yeah. Prospect on the yeah. other side of Della. He was saying, man, you know, a couple of them were offered to me for like $5,000 and yeah. I turned them down and I yeah. just couldn't help If leave. we only knew, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, he was yeah. like, but at the time it was shit. But, you know, nobody wanted it. by the time you were you were coming of age, the the, the tide had turned and, and you were able to make that good investment. I've heard two main ways to be successful. One, be an early adopter. Do it yeah. when nobody else is doing. Absolutely. And then the other one, if you can't do that, just be the best, <laughs> which is hard. Absolutely. <laughs> I think absolutely. It, I'm always trying to be early. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I have issues with that because <laughs> I was late today. But uh, yeah, that that's great. That's yeah, the way yeah. to do it. Um, and I, I miss that boat big time. Well, it's never too late, as you know. No, it's not too late. We're working on it now. But uh, I didn't even, I mean, at that, we didn't move to New York until 2005. So, okay. Well, I, I think being a business owner, it's very humbling. I mean, it sounds like it's yeah. all grandiose and, and full of profit, but it's really a lot of hard work. You do wear right. a lot of hats. I mean, mm-hmm. as, a, as an owner, um, I mean, what don't you do, right? Um, and you're always trying to be strategic, yet tactical. You're trying to fight fires, not, not get overwhelmed. And you, sometimes real fires. Yeah. And sometimes. <laughs> you have real fires. Real, uh, <laughs> real, not, not with the FDNY, but yeah, real emergencies, yeah. you know, things happen. So, uh, you have to stay on top of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, you've done more than just residential though. You've done, well, I guess some of the buildings you've done were mixed use. So it hasn't all been just like, yeah. especially Windsor Terrace is kind of dotted for those of you who haven't been there with a lot of not, not so many brownstones, but limestone and then also wood frame brick facades. Some of them as skinny as 12 feet wide sure like sure. 12 by 60 um but really quaint and cute um but but there's some bigger buildings that you've done even in the uh recently um, yeah yeah so my uh my one of my largest projects uh i was telling sam was probably my one of my first yeah. and it happened that, to come about that, yeah at the same time i was leaving my full-time job i was leaving that to not only do construction but also do development and of course, we got so hit with the recession. Can you, can you the explain the difference between the two for people that are that are listening that might not? Yeah, know so that. it's a different. Uh, so there's a, there's a number of uh, differences. So a developer would, uh, you know, buy a property, uh, whether it be land or, or a physical asset, mm. and put some strategy around how to improve upon it, expand it, make it better, but yet not execute the work. Gotcha. Actually, hire a contractor, right. and of mm-hmm. course, some may do both. Right. Uh, but for me, it was uh, at one end of the spectrum was to be the developer only and uh, work with others to execute. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, being in transcend construction, I am the one doing the execute. Right. So, in fact, I would do both. Right. Uh, but, yeah, so my first project was a development and it was uh, in Windsor Terrace. And uh, we I also got some resistance on that project, if you can imagine. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> it's pretty successful today. I've gotten, I've gotten but, resistance on projects in Windsor Terrace myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but at the time, it was it was a building and I'll even back up a little bit so my wife and i uh we we bought that building to put a school you know we were Mm. not that we're you know in the school business but we said you know park slope all these great neighborhoods have 
private schools. Well, you're looking at Why all the have kids one? that are being born. Absolutely. Like, hey, <laughs> so it's make money. It's part of that money. entrepreneurial, uh, you know, just drive was to, you know, put something in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. But the economy was changing right. and it just made more sense, um, maybe, maybe for many reasons, to redevelop it. And, and you were saying this is around 2008 when things this started is in to 2008 really. 2008. Yeah, and when things really, really the got fallout was happening. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but in the end, we, we moved forward with uh, a knockdown and a re- redevelop. And then the uh, the collapse happened, mm-hmm. and uh, you know some of the capital dried up, and so we had to re-strategize, recapitalize, right. kind of reimagine what we would do in that space, and ultimately, uh, it's what you have today—a mixed-use apartment with a commercial space that I think has been very positive. Is that Prospect of Vanderbilt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Prospect of Vanderbilt, uh, it's all very good, slash, very bright, right? and uh, it's it's been good. And I think yeah. maybe you've, you even looked at some of the space back. In I the did day. Yeah, <laughs> when it, in the build out, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely so, did. Worked um, out. So you have the you you got the 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 benefit and of the angle of working both sides. Absolutely. Would you say that was uh, a good move for you? Is that just inherent in how you would want to operate, anyways? Because I'm I'm always doing that. I'm always trying to fold in. Oh, what's the next uh, aspect of of this industry that can make me more successful? Was it something you <clears throat> yeah. thought about ahead of time? Like I want to do both, or did it just become about? Yeah. So for, for, for me, it's, it's, it's about two things. One, it's about the home and two, it's about the project. I just mm-hmm. love projects. Right. Uh, hey, I love that they have a, uh, an ending, right? Mm-hmm. They just don't go on forever, but yeah, I just love to, I love the process of starting right. something new, journey. Yeah. working through it, meeting people, developing relationships, and then of course, creating something beautiful and mm-hmm. maybe even very everlasting. Uh, so that was a big thing for me. Um, and, you know, having spent many years in in pretty large projects, right, bringing about IT projects that have global and uh, very broad nature. Prior, yeah, prior. prior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really, you know, for me to do a home was like just doing a satellite office. Right, it was right. very straightforward, <laughs> um, and so I was really able to uh, enjoy the process. That's great, and I still do. Yeah, very much. Well, I uh, I've done a little a little myself, and uh, it's overwhelming for me. I. I uh, housing, you. housing. Uh, well, I grew up uh, in in a family. I was mentioning to you last night. Um, my my mom's dad was a was a carpenter. My dad's dad was an electrician. They both had their own businesses. My stepdad uh, was a plumbing contractor. Wow. You know, he started with one van, yeah, just a yeah, guy with the course. band going around, and he built and built and built, and now they're you know they're all up and down the East Coast, and and it's a pretty big company. And so I was always around it and then worked in the summers and stuff like that. I did, there wasn't anything I didn't do in a house, but I then even more, to that. yeah, <laughs> but even more recently, like when we, when we built Della, Jane and I ended up getting, uh, you know, a, a one-off commercial contracting license just to do the build out there. Do what you can. Sure, yeah. Sure. Um, you know, in an attempt to save money, which we didn't, of course, uh, cause we didn't know what the hell we were doing. <laughs> Not really, but, uh, but it was a great experience in terms of learning, but I still have like, a little like PTSD from that. Like anytime I see a department of buildings vehicle, I might not even be in Windsor Terrace and like yeah. my heart kind of palpitates. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, oh, she's not for me. He's not for yeah, me. Don't we all. Yeah. Well, I, you, I was going to say, you have to have pretty thick skin to that right yeah. now. You, you, yeah. you probably like, it's like me with the department of health now. They used to bother yeah. me. And now I'm just like, whatever, dude, you're going to do your thing. I've been through the ropes. I've been to the court cases, the hearings. I've dealt with it all at this point. Are you, do you have less anxiety around that? Maybe, maybe depending on the project. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't have anxiety, although there is a level of just uncertainty, right? Sure. You just don't know. I think you like that though, don't you? I, I do, th- I do like change and uncertainty, yeah. but I, in a project sense, I like to plan and be strategic. Yeah. So, but yeah, so we, we do a lot of pre-planning. We do a lot of strategy. We think through things mm-hmm. and we, we make sure things are regulations and the laws are in place. So when they show up, if they show up, uh, we're just less everything. less anxiety yeah. over it. But nonetheless, yeah, we, we do worry, you know, just yeah, yeah, sure. We don't want we don't want the project to get set back. Yeah, right? absolutely. so schedule is important. Absolutely. Big time. Speaking of schedules, we're gonna take a little Another break. break. I'm, I think I'm back on track now. Uh, we'll be back with you in a few minutes. I'm gonna breathe. I literally ran up Eighth Avenue to get here, so mm. we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> 